This is Sports Friday, Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania's most comprehensive sports program. Sports Friday is brought to you by Hurtley Motor World, Lotto Pizza, and Snapple. Now the area's most experienced sports team, Jim Miller and Sid Michael. Sports Friday! Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sports Friday and week number 10 of local high school football. Jim Miller along with Sid Michaels, the final weekend of regular season play before the PIAA playoffs begin next weekend. Big game tonight in Peckville. A victory would have clinched no worse than a share of the Big 11 Conference title for the Cougars of Valley View. They took on Dunmore, and it took a grand total of four plays for Valley View to establish themselves tonight. Sophomore Brian Fisher, this kid's going to be a good one. He takes the handoff. Goes to the right side of the line and goes 48 yards. It was the Cougars' first score of the night. 7-0, just two minutes into the game. The next time Valley View got the ball, Fisher again caps a 73-yard drive. It's 14-0. Dunmore fumbled. The Cougars go to work again. John Munley drills this pass to Chris Esgro, and he will fight his way 29 yards to the Bucks' 41-yard line. It set up the first of two first-half touchdowns by Franco Frigioni, one of 18 yards. This one a five-yarder. It was 26 to nothing. Valley View scored in their first five possessions tonight. Mike Barrett will feel this Dunmore punt at his own 41-yard line. He heads to the left, avoids one tackler, will cut back inside, shake another tackler, and he is gone. 59 yards for the touchdown. It was 34 nothing at halftime. The final tonight, a stunner. Valley View shuts out Dunmore. Now, if North Pocono beats Lakeland tomorrow, Valley View and North Pocono share the Big 11 title. If Lakeland beats the Trojans, Valley View is the champion outright. At Crispin Field in Burling tonight, the 8-1 Bulldogs went non-conference in their regular season finale, playing host to Lee Heighton. The Bulldogs on the move early in the game. Quarterback Dave Robbins finds Brian Ramley over the middle for 17 yards in the Indians' five-yard line. On the next play, Robbins on the keeper left is hit. He would lose the football. It bounces away several times. The Indians fall on it, and that killed off the Burling drive for a potential score. Big trouble later hits for the Indians of Lee Heighton. The snap gets away. The punter picks it up. He breaks to the outside but cannot pick up the first down. And Berwick takes over at the 40-yard line. Ross Stoiko would then give the Bulldogs the lead with this 20-yard score for off left tackle as Berwick finishes regular season play at 9-1. Your final again tonight, the Bulldogs over Lee Heighton, 35-7. At Trojan Field in Nanticoke tonight, the annual battle between Nanticoke and the Hawkeyes of Hanover area. Trailing 7-0, Nanticoke in the air to move the football as Ron Warman hits Ryan Stats down the right sideline for 30 yards and the first down. Later in the drive, Warman and Steps team up one more time. This time, the bomb down the left side for 20 yards and another first down, and the Trojans were knocking at the door. On the very next play, Warman finds Ted Eldridge on the crossing pattern in the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point was no good, 7-6 Hanover area. The Hawkeyes came right back. The slant pass to Pat Patton, and he shows tremendous power in the open field. He breaks several tackles and winds up at the 32-yard gain in Anticoke's 22-yard line. The next play, it's the inside give to Hatton. He was gone. 22 yards for the score in the seesaw football game at Nanticoke High School tonight. Your final, Nanticoke comes back to win it, 21-13. And Sports Friday for the last weekend of regular season play continues on in just a moment with more Pennsylvania high school football. You're watching Sports Friday on WBRE-TV. Welcome back to Sports Friday. I'm Sid Michaels along with Jim Miller. Last week of the regular season in high school football. Let's go to Spartan Stadium in Kingston. The Spartans of Valley West trying to close it on a winning note against the Crusaders of Coughlin. Some highlights from that ball game now. Defense used by Coughlin to set up their first score of the night. That's Jeff Wolf. Stepping in and intercepting the pass. And Coughlin on the move. Baldo Vincerelli takes the ball. He cuts back, makes another move, and then bounces to the outside. Big first down for Vincerelli. Later, one more time. It's Coughlin's main man in the backfield. Baldo Vincerelli from four yards out in tonight's game with Valley West. And the final, Coughlin wins it 31-7. to 
At Memorial Stadium in Wilkesbury tonight, the Mohawks and Myers took on GAR. The Grenadiers come up big with defense as Jeff Zellner picks off the pass and he was gone. He takes it all the way back down the left sideline and GAR had the early lead. The Mohawks open quarter number three as Joe Mashinsky powers over from the four and that cut the GR lead to a pair of touchdowns before a nice crowd on the last game of regular season play. Grenadiers come right back, their relentless ground game. This is Manuel de Graffenried on the pitch, and he was gone. Better than 50 yards down the left sideline for the score. Your final tonight, it was GAR over the Mohawks of Myers, 29-15. Also tonight in high school football, the invaders of West Scranton were at home against the Vikings of Riverside, and the Spartans of Mid Valley played host to Lackawanna Trail. Katie Katie Layton cover that action and files this report. The Mid Valley Spartans hosted Lackawanna Trail tonight. First quarter action, Mid Valley's D dominates. Lackawanna Trail fourth down on the 12. The pass to Brad Sharpie is knocked down by Robert Evans. He keeps the Lions from scoring. Early in the second, Mid Valley's offense would come alive. Robert Evans finds a hole. He goes all the way, 81 yards, putting the Spartans ahead, 6 0. Late in the second, Lackawanna Trail tries to catch up. Quarterback Keith Schubert goes solo. A two-point conversion makes the score 8-6, Lackawanna Trail. Trail would hold on to win 22-20. Our second game tonight takes us to Memorial Stadium in Scranton, where the invaders of West Scranton play host to Riverside. Both teams tonight are looking to keep their playoff hopes alive with a victory. At the half, the invaders of West Scranton are ahead 7-0. West Scranton adds to their lead early in the third quarter. Greg Arcuri breaks away with a punt return. He goes 63 yards to the end zone, making the score 14-0 West Side. Riverside's defense answers back. Bob Flickering intercepts a West Scranton pass. Same possession, quarterback Rich Conti finds Ryan Duran to move Riverside to the six. Next play, Conti to Duran again in the end zone to finish the job. Riverside trailing 14-6. For Sports Friday, I'm Katie Layton. And now let's look at the numbers. There you see it. Lackawanna Trail over Mid Valley 22 20. West Scranton closes the regular season 28 14 winners over Riverside. And Pennsylvania High School football on the last weekend of regular season play rolls on right here on Sports Friday. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. You're watching Sports Friday on WBRE-TV. Sports Friday! Welcome back here to Sports Friday. Sid Michaels along with Jim Miller. We have one correction to make tonight from a high school game that we reported on earlier. GAR defeated Myers 49-15. to That is the correct final you see right there. We now check out the showdown in Pottsville between the Crimson Tide and the Cougars of Hazleton, as well as the game between Lords Regional and Minersville. For that story, we bring in the high-powered and very colorful, fast Eddie Horrigan. The Crimson Tide of Pottsville, looking like a team on a mission tonight, taking their opening drive and marching 63 yards. Here, Jeff Yoder finds Mike Stank for 13 yards to the 45. Later in that same drive on fourth and long, Yoder finds Willie White deep, and he connects for 36 yards and a first down on the eights. Two plays later, John Ruck plows his way into the end zone for the 6-0 lead. Pottsville continued with their air assault as Yoder finds Stank again. This time, the play goes for 29 yards to the two, where Eric Homa caps the drive, and Pottsville wins, keeping their playoff postseason hopes alive. Our second game has Lords Regional at Minersville. With the Battle of Miners up 7-6 in the third, Bob Chesney hooks up with Dave Schwartz, and look at him go, 45 yards for the touchdown as the two teams wrap up their 94 season. For Sports Friday, I'm Ed Horrigan. And we go to the scores once again. Pottsville over Hazelton area, 27-6. Minersville edges Lords Regional, 13-12. We now turn to the action in the Williamsport area tonight. The Millionaires travel to State College, Bloomsburg at South Williamsport, and Montoursville playing host to Milton. Steve Shenevy covered some of the action, and here's his report. <laughs> The Mounties didn't waste any time showing why they haven't lost a game this season. Andy Coolidge took the handoff on Southside's first play from scrimmage and scrambled 76 yards for the opening score. Not to be outdone, Corey Persson burst into the open field and found the end zone 83 yards later. A Bloomsburg's best chance to score in the first half ended with a fourth down incompletion. Once again, the Mounties passed up the competition. Go! In the second year in a row, 
The Mounties finished their regular season without a loss. A homecoming crowd filled Warrior Stadium tonight on this last home game of the regular season. A season which has seen this Montoursville team lose only one game. And with the playoffs right around the corner, a season which is far from over. With a 13-point lead in the third quarter, Chris Reeder broke through the line with his eyes glued to the goal line. Unfortunately, Matt Wilson had his eyes glued to the ball as he forced the fumble and Milton took over on their 20. After a 40-yard pass for Matt Wilson to Ryan Newhart, Milton got on the board on this timing pattern from Wilson to Jason Brown. Facing third and goal, Montoursville's defense kept Milton on the run as Matt Wilson weaved around defenders before dumping off the screen for a 20-yard loss. Adam Alexander added the finishing touch to Montoursville's winning season as he punched it in from the one. The Warriors will be back at home next week for the first round of playoff action. For Sports Friday, I'm Steve Shenevy. And the finals from the Williamsport area again. The Millionaires close the regular season. 21-6 winners over State College. South Williamsport 49, Bloomsburg 6, Montoursville 21, Milton 7. Now, here are the scores from other games played throughout the area tonight. As always, we sincerely hope that your favorite team won. Sports Friday comes back and takes a look at Penn State football as well as the battles on tap tomorrow for the Wilkes University Colonels and the Monarchs of King's College. Sports Friday. Enjoy the Sports Bulletin this Sunday and every Sunday for the latest in local and national sports coverage. Available at your favorite newsstand, convenient mart, or grocery store. Watch for the latest college football scores and comprehensive news, including updates on Ron Paulus, Gary Brown, Bo Orlando, The Rocket, and Quadwell Ijmal. Our award-winning writers do the extra yard to bring you the inside and all the high school and college sports in the region. From outdoor to automotive news, the Sports Bulletin is a local sports paper for you. And at 50 cents, it's the best deal in town. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Francis. Here's some of what you'll see on this month's edition of Northeast Pennsylvania Business. It's 180 feet long and weighs 250 tons, and it's made here in Northeast PA. We'll tell you what it is. There's something new in real estate, the house that sells itself. And how do you create 5,000 new jobs? That's the goal of one local community. Join us for Northeast Pennsylvania Business, the television show, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., brought to you by Mellon Bank and the Northeast Pennsylvania Business Journal. You're watching Sports Friday on WBRE-TV. Welcome back to Sports Friday, everyone. Jim Miller along with Sid Michaels. And ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our Sports Friday Play of the Night, Sid. Let's go back up to Peckville in Valley View. Dunmore lined up to punt. This kick will be field by, fielded by Valley View's Mike Barrett at his own 41-yard line. He shakes a tackler there, shakes another one there, and he is gone. 59 yards for the touchdown in Valley View. Stunning 40 to nothing victory. Major college football tomorrow afternoon. The Lions of Penn State are in Bloomington, Indiana to face the Indiana Hoosiers in search of their eighth win of the 1994 season. The Lions are 24-point favorites to win as they close in on the Big Ten Conference Championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day, actually January 2nd. Next week, it's on to Illinois before they close out at home with back-to-back -back games against the Wildcats of Northwestern and the Spartans of Michigan State. Division Three college football locally tomorrow great matchup in Sealands Grove. The Crusaders of Susquehanna will host the Wilkes University Colonels. All kinds of playoff possibilities on the line. Colonels 6-2 and two going into the game. Coming off the win over Lycoming last weekend. Susquehanna lost to Widener. Both teams need a win to keep their playoff hopes alive tomorrow. 
Meanwhile, the Monarchs of King's College back home tomorrow afternoon to play host of the Greyhounds of Moravian at the new Monarch Field. Kings is coming off a win at MPU Madison in New Jersey last week and now stand the chance to post back-to-back -back wins for the first time ever. The Monarchs and the Colonels square off in the backyard battle of local college football next Saturday afternoon at Ralston Field in Edwardsville. And footballs weren't the only bombs being thrown in the area tonight. Let's go to the CYC in Scranton. The original Tough Man contest came to town and it runs through tomorrow night. Fighters have to have less than five fights in their careers. It's strictly amateur, really. The contest, super heavyweights, heavyweights, three, three, one, uh, three one minute rounds in this. The field cut in half tonight, tomorrow night, an eventual winner and runner up will have to fight two $1,000 prizes on the line. They'll get it away tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And also tomorrow night, 7.30, the scranton Wilkesboro Eagles will play Marlboro in their national championship tournament. George Foreman, Michael Moore tomorrow night in Vegas. Foreman, 72 and 4, 67 knockouts, 250 pounds. Moore, 35 and 0 with 30 knockouts, 220 pounds. Anybody have the poll tonight? Uh, no, no race until next <laughs> week. <laughs> thank you. We thank you. That's it for Sports Friday, and we'll see you next Friday night with the beginning of the 1994 football playoffs. Sports Friday. Sports Friday. Sports Friday has been brought to you by Wyoming Valley Motors, Turkey Hill Minute Market, and the Sports Bulletin. Join us next Friday night for Sports Friday on WCRE-TV.